This story was sent to me by Stephanie Dews and it's coming out of Cleveland, Ohio. And this story right here falls right into the category of disgusting, disturbing, and he needs his ass beat. So this person's name is Solomon Nee Watawa. I'm guessing you'll see that I'll put his name in the title. And he was a Cleveland cop and he just recently pled guilty to urinating on a 12 year old girl at a, at a bus stop. If I was the father of this girl, I would probably pull a Melvin Harris. And those of you who watched my video on Melvin Harris know exactly what I'm talking about. A Cleveland cop who urinated on a 12 year old girl in a revolting attack at a school bus stop has pled guilty. Officer Solomon, Solomon Nee Wadawa, age 34, copped to three felonies and one misdemeanor in the August 16th attack at a bus stop in Euclid, where the off duty cop initially asked the victim if she needed a ride. The girl refused the offer, prompting Solomon to drive off, only to return a minute later. He then exposed himself to the young girl before recording himself urinating on her. That is. <sighs> It is some straight up creeps out in this world. It doesn't make any sense how disgusting people like this guy is. All because she refused to ask you for a ride and she had every right to do so because she's 12 years old. She doesn't know who you are. For all she knows, you could have been some kind of human trafficker. And now knowing what you did, I'm glad she said no. There's reports that come across my desk that just leave me shaking my head. Prosecutor Michael O'Malley told the station, certainly this is one that I will never forget because you just can't believe anyone, let alone a law enforcement officer could engage in this type of activity. Then he must have not seen how a lot of these cops get down, not just in his area, but just around the establishment. As part of his plea on Monday, Solomon agreed to give up his police officer certification and will have to register as a sex offender for the next 15 years he faces up to seven and a half years at his sentencing on january 21st we'll give him all of that but you want to know what's so interesting that woman down in florida actually engaged in sexual acts with those boys who were minors and she didn't even have to register as a sex offender and we know why she had two things on her side and we all know what those two things were but that doesn't negate the fact that this guy definitely needs to also register as a sex offender as well because he basically exposed himself to a minor and then pretended and then proceeded to put a bodily fluid on her Solomon's trial had been set to start Monday prosecutors dropped charges of assault interfering with custody and public indecency as a part of his guilty plea you wonder how this individual slid through the cracks, O'Malley said in reference to Solomon passing psychological testing to become a cop. That's a question that we ask of a lot of these cops nowadays. How did they pass the psychological testing? I think some of them just didn't take it. Hopefully we can improve the testing in law enforcement so that individuals like this never put on a badge again. Detectives are also still trying to access Solomon's cell phone, but have not been able to enter its security code to review the videos and photos it contains. So now seeing that, they probably want to know, does this guy have any child pornography in his phone? Which wouldn't be far fetched considering the age of the victim in which he decided to release his urine on. Solomon, a five-year department veteran, will remain on unpaid administrative suspension until he is sentenced. He will likely later be fired after an internal review. Cleveland Police Sergeant Jennifer Chacha told The Post. It is some weird does out here, but like I said, if that had happened to my daughter, like if I had a daughter and that happened to her, like I said, I would probably pull a Melvin Harris. And that'll be it. They will probably he probably wouldn't make it to a sentencing date. I wonder what her family, the little girl's family, is like saying about this. And this, they said this happened back in August. So this happened literally right after the school year started. Because um, for it to happen in August, that means school had just got started. And I wouldn't be surprised if this guy has gone around and driving past bus stops before in the past talking to little girls they yeah now that i think about it yeah they need to uh get into his phone asap because i'm curious as to what he has in there i don't know why they just don't make him open the phone after all like he's in custody what can he do 
or find a hacker or somebody to open it up and see what else is in there. And see, the thing is, now knowing this, if there is child pornography in there, that's more years that's going to be attached to him. But y'all let me know what you think, and I'll talk to you in the next one.